Leverage, the critical key to an amazing car deal. Many car buyers today get a far less than average deal because they have no idea how to gain leverage over a car dealer. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homer Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Today's amazing video is brought to you by The Homer Guy team, home of super high intensity training for car buyers and a very savvy group of auto experts to boot. To the disappointment of some car dealers that really just need to get out of the business, we're gonna help you outmaneuver car dealers out there and help you gain leverage. If you appreciate the help we provide for car buyers with the Homework Guy videos, and you wanna support our efforts, there are plenty of ways for you to get on board to help us. Leverage is not that difficult to understand, and yet most car buyers are either unaware that it exists, or don't know how to acquire it, or have no idea how to effectively use it against car dealers if they did have it. What I'm about to share with you can be used with both new and used car purchases with a few minor differences. To understand leverage, it helps to understand what leverage is not. So, let me give you a few examples of what the opposite of leverage looks like. You calling a car dealer because the price of a car caught your eye. No leverage. You walking a car lot looking for a car. No leverage. You shopping in a car dealership showroom. No leverage. You sitting down with a salesman to look over the numbers, no leverage. You haggling over car price at a dealership, no leverage. You visiting a dealer to see what you can get approved for, <laughs> you should know this is no leverage. You're going for test drives to try out cars at a dealer, no leverage. You're asking a dealer if you can roll your old car loan into the new one, no leverage. You're sitting down in a dealer finance office, listening to a menu presentation on products and fees. No leverage. It doesn't mean you should never do any of these things, like test driving cars to see what you like. Just know that you are gathering information about cars you like while under the influence of a car dealer. While test driving is necessary, you won't gain any leverage doing it. You're just answering a few of your own questions to make sure the car is right for you. But when you're done, you do have to leave. It's not the time to do a car deal. Listen closely what I'm about to say next. When you don't have leverage, you get sold a car. Did you hear that? You get sold. Not only the car, but all those goodies to go with it. The fees, the products, everything. You get sold. But when you have leverage, you actually get to buy a car. Did you hear the difference? You get to buy what you want, and you don't have to put up with any of the nonsense. Don't get sold. Instead, be a buyer. There's a huge difference. You cross over being sold to being a buyer with leverage, and only with leverage, and knowing how to use it. It's also important to know that you want more than just a little bit of leverage. You must have serious leverage, because it's only serious leverage that can get you an amazing car deal. Serious leverage comes by taking multiple steps, but the good news is, is that none of it's overly difficult. I do it all the time, and I know many others who do as well. So, are you ready to talk about gaining serious leverage? Yes! I hope so. First, you should know that knowledge is power, and as you acquire knowledge, you also are acquiring leverage. You have questions you need answered before you start because unknowns in any situation undermine your leverage. You can't have that happening to you. Not if you want a great car deal. So let's start by acquiring knowledge and then we'll discuss how you add your knowledge to a process that nets serious leverage. Number one, if you're planning to take out a car loan, talk to your own bank or credit union before you do any car shopping of any kind and get all the details, pre-approval amount, the term, interest rate, everything. When you have that information in hand, you're gaining some leverage. If you're a cash buyer, you're good to go. Just make sure you watch our video titled, Don't Say I'm Paying Cash at the Car Dealer, so you understand a dealer's business model and don't undermine your leverage in the process. Number two, if you're replacing a car and plan to trade your old one in, call a minimum of three dealers and get a cash value appraisal guesstimate of what your car's value is. Have them email it to you so you have it in writing. Use an alternate email if you'd like. The reason you do this is that you must know what dealers are willing to pay for your car. You should also call your banker. Give them the VIN number of your vehicle and all the information about your car, the trim level, everything, the condition that it's in, and tell them that you'd like to know what the loan value is on the car. You don't even have to tell them it's your car. You also need to know 
what the LTV is that the bank is using. That's loan to value ratio. 100% LTV is the total cash value. And 80% LTV is 80% of the cash value. Makes sense? But either way, you'll know the wholesale cash value of your car. You can compare this information with the bids you got from the dealers and leverage it later if you need to. When you have this information in hand and you add it to the banking information you already have, you have more leverage. It's not serious leverage yet, but you're getting there. Number three, identify a vehicle that meets your driving needs. Whatever it is that you need in your next car, truck, van, SUV, write it all down. Don't store information like that up here in your head. Emotions and whims make you forget it. With your list complete, go take a few test drives at car dealers and make sure the vehicle you think you want is exactly what you want. A big warning here. If you find a vehicle that you really like, I said this earlier, remember that at the conclusion of the test driving, you are going home without that car. Trust me when I say there are thousands of cars that fit your unique requirements. Don't ever believe anyone that the car you just drove is the only car on the planet that fits your needs. That's hogwash. Tune all of that out. If you agree to sit down, you lost leverage. If you get lost in the weeds because you're getting emotionally involved because you took a few test drives, well, you're losing huge leverage. Just test drive. That's it. And go home. You got the information you need and you keep your leverage intact. Mission accomplished. Number four, conduct an internet search once your homework is done. Everything I've mentioned so far needs to be out of the way. Find eight to 10 dealers that have the car you want. Yes, I didn't stutter there. I didn't say two or three. With just two dealers, you have minimal leverage, but you have some. With three to five dealers, you have a bit more. But with eight to 10 dealers, no matter how far away from you they are, even if you'd have to buy an airplane ticket to go see the car they have, eight to 10 dealers gives you an advantage you've likely never thought of before. This move, coupled with the homework you did earlier, gets you serious leverage. I'll explain. I'm going to spend a little time on this one because it's very important that you understand why 8 to 10 dealer quotes for the car you want is such a big deal. You'll never know which dealer in your region is really motivated to move a car right now. Tons of factors come into play. A given dealer may be running behind on their goals or they're having a very poor sales week and needs deals badly. Another dealer may be having a very bad month and things are so bad that jobs are now on the line in their dealership. You're very unlikely to find this dealer if you only contact two or three dealers. You see what I mean? You can never predict which dealers will go the extra mile for you because it changes all the time. One bad month could be followed by an amazing month for that same dealer, and suddenly they're not even interested in talking to you. Does that make sense? By targeting eight to 10 dealers, including dealers well outside your normal travel distance, you will find the struggling dealers that need your business badly. When you contact eight to 10 dealers, you usually find two who really want your business and those two dealers will bend over backwards to get you to buy their car. Did you hear what I said? They'll do anything to get you to buy their car. You're not getting sold anymore. That ugly phrase of getting sold at the big fat greedy dealer, that is out the window. You are a buyer now. You have a loan lined up or cash to pay with. You know what your trade is worth if you plan to trade. You've taken all the test drives. You've done all the advanced homework. You're totally in the driver's seat on this deal. And now you're on the hunt for the two dealers who desperately need your business right now. And you got to contact eight to 10 to find them. They aren't in any position to sell you anything. They are begging to find a buyer. And buyers, the kind of buyers I just described, have serious leverage. And right now, if you've done this, that's you, my friend. Okay, step number five. Start contacting the dealers. Identify the vehicle on their lot that matches the homework you've done and have them give you their price. Tell them you're ready to do business when the right dealer comes up with the right deal for you. Here's what will happen. The fat dealers will tell you that you need to come in. They aren't hungry. Ignore them. Just hang up and contact the next dealer. Within 10 phone calls, you will have found at least two dealers who seriously want your business. This is getting exciting. Number six, when the right two dealers are identified, you can tell that by those nice low prices that come back. Get back to them and tell them you've done all your homework. This is key. Let them know you're a buyer, that you know how you're going to pay for it. The money is lined up. You have several appraisals on your trade if you're trading, so you know exactly what your car is worth. 
and you did the homework so you know exactly what car you want. The truly hungry dealers are not going to play games with you. They hear a buyer on your end of the phone, a buyer that means business and a buyer they desperately need and they'll get right down to the brass tacks. Number seven, lay out your timetable. This is your last move. You have the leverage and all the info you need from two hungry dealers who want you to buy their car. You now have serious leverage. One or both of the dealers you end up with maybe outside your area, and that's fine. I've traveled many times to buy cars. It's no big deal. Here's what you're going to do. Get back to the two dealers and tell them you're ready to buy. Let them know that one other dealer is bidding against them and has also offered a very low price. This is when you're going to say, I'm ready to make a trip to your dealership and buy the car. It's just going to be a simple, straight-up deal. Make sure you say that. No nonsense fees or unneeded products. I'm a car buyer. That's it. Tax title license, the out-the-door price. That's what I need from you. Give it your best shot because I'm ready to buy. If you beat out the other dealer, I'm coming today or tomorrow at the latest. I'm going to hang up and let you think through your best offer and send it to me. I need to get that offer back within one hour. You'll get the info you need within one hour. The hungry dealer can't afford to let you slip away. They need you that badly. Boom! This is the serious leverage territory, my friend, and you've just learned how to use it. Without leverage, you're being sold. With serious leverage, you get to buy a car at a price that you want. I hope that now you realize how big of a deal leverage is and that you understand anyone can acquire it. You just have to be willing to do the advance work and then contact 8 to 10 dealers when you're ready to play ball. It doesn't actually take very long. It really is that simple. This does work on both new or used cars. The key difference is that with a used car, there can be condition differences you should be aware of and that you also should have a car mechanically inspected that is used. It's not that big of a deal. I bought used cars some distance away, contacted a local shop that I wanted to use for an inspection and set up an appointment to have the car looked at. Car inspections are cheap and mechanics love to share their wisdom with you. Especially for a car buyer, finding a good mechanic is not that difficult. Let me explain why. The repair shop isn't selling you anything. For the most part, you don't have to worry about them misleading you. The thing that I make clear to the repair shop is that I'm expecting to see what the mechanic is looking at. I'm expecting to go out into the shop and see the car on the hoist. I want to see it underneath. I have the mechanic walk me through everything he has looked at. It has never failed me. If you appreciate the video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and make sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter too. We post notifications and other updates on other social media sites. And by the way, many other social media sites, the homework guy is coming to. So watch for us wherever you may be. We answer car buying questions there too. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links you see here will be easy to find in the description box down below or on our website. Here's the best part. We don't just help car buyers. We love to do that, but 100% of your tips go to help a great friend of ours, Maggie. This amazing young lady is making a huge difference in the lives of university students. We enthusiastically sponsor her mission of love and kindness, and Maggie thanks you in advance. Just like the Homework Guy channel, Maggie knows that you change the world by what you do. If you can't do a tip today, no problem. Just help us get the word out. The Homework Guy team loves it when you share our videos with your family and friends and encourage others to subscribe to the channel. As our following grows, each and every one of you play a role in helping to defeat the dishonest operators in the car business who are still trying to figure out that honesty and fairness is the best business model. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care everyone.